Hi, this is Mrs. Ziegler, and I'm going to go over your classifying matter notes for those students who are not in class or for any student who would like to review this information. So in class, or if you are quarantined, you need to complete your notes. So you should have this graphic organizer, or you can actually copy this into your notebook if you do not have a printer. And you will use this presentation that is in Schoology. It was the green paper that was on the table that you had access to that you are using to complete the graphic organizer. So um, in class, we went over notes that were to be put into your notebook. So here it told you to count out pages so that you can separate your bell work from your notes. Regardless of how you do your notes, you are going to start these notes where on top called classifying matter. So next we are going to define these three words, matter, which is what you are going to learn how to classify, which is anything that has mass and takes up space. An atom is the smallest particle that makes up an element that is often represented by a single shape or color. The molecule is two or more atoms that are chemically combined together covalently. Again, covalently is a word that you really do not need to understand at this point. The only thing that you have to remember is that a molecule is two or more atoms that are essentially stuck together and cannot be physically separated. So in your notes, you are going to define these five words as we go through them here and in the notes that you would copy from the handout, you would get these definitions. But in your textbook on pages 38 through 42, you will get the definitions of pure substance, element, compound, heterogeneous mixture, and homogeneous mixture. Now it says here for number four that you're going to copy the graphic organizer. That is actually the notes that you were given. So you're not going to do this part. Essentially, this is the information I'm going to go over. So matter, remember, is anything that has mass and takes up space, can be classified into two different types. You've got pure substances and mixtures. The differences between these two are that pure substances are the same composition throughout that cannot be physically separated, whereas a mixture is not the same composition throughout. It is made up of two or more different pure substances and can be physically separated. Then when you break, decide which type of class that matter is, there are two different types of those classes. For pure substances, there's element and compound. So remember, elements and compounds are pure substances because they have the same composition throughout. Essentially, anything from the periodic table is a pure substance. A pure substance, I'm sorry, an element is made up of one type of atom. Remember, that is generally represented by one shape or color, whereas a compound is two or more different type of atoms that are chemically combined, stuck together, and cannot be physically separated. Whereas a mixture, which can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous, the way that you know that you are homogeneous, homo means the same, so therefore it is the same composition throughout, which means you cannot see the different parts, which essentially means that it has a pattern when looking at it at a smaller level. Whereas heterogeneous, hetero means different, where you can see the different parts. In the handout, there are examples. So for an element, an example of an element would be copper, the chemical symbol Cu. A compound example would be water, H2O. An example of homogeneous mixture would be Kool-Aid. An example of a heterogeneous mixture would be like pepperoni pizza. So in these notes, you were to um, cut out this paper right here, but I gave you, so if you're grabbing your notes from um, the back, you would grab the half sheet. Otherwise you could draw these or you could print them up on your own. They are on Schoology. So here you could see that on the top, it tells you that those four shapes represent one type of atom. So when we look at the different substances, these all are, substances at a molecular level, meaning very, very small particles that make up your substance. When we look at this, we are going to identify for these six if it's going to be a pure substance or mixture. 
Then after we determine if it's a pure substance or a mixture, we'll determine if it's going to be an element or compound, depending if it's a pure substance, or heterogeneous or homogeneous if it's a mixture. So when we look at this substance, we look to see, are these all the same particles throughout the entire substance? Since they are, then we know that this is a pure substance. When we look at this substance, you can see that we have different particles throughout the entire substance. So therefore, this is a mixture. When we look at this one, again, we do not have the same particles throughout the entire thing. So therefore, this is a mixture. When we look at this substance, we see that there's different particles throughout the entire thing. So this is a mixture. When we look at this substance, we can see that these are all the same and therefore it's one type. So therefore this is a pure substance. When we look at this last substance, we can see that these are all the same throughout the entire substance. So therefore this is a pure substance. Now after we decide whether it is a pure substance or mixture, we now need to determine is this a element or compound if it's a pure substance if it's a mixture is it hetero or homogeneous so for a pure substance here again we know it's either an element or compound again by definition an element is one type of atom or a compound is two or more different types of atoms so therefore because this is one type of atom this is an element when we look here, in order to tell the difference between hetero and homogeneous, especially at this level, you must see a pattern for it to be homogeneous. So as we look here, we see that we essentially have two separate layers of two different atoms, so two different elements. So therefore, this is a heterogeneous mixture. When we look at this mixture, you can see some sort of a pattern. So we've got square plus circle, you've got square um, plus circle you have circle square plus circle square plus circle over here would be a square plus so therefore this with a pattern it's not a great pattern but we still have a some kind of pattern this is homogeneous when we look at this one <coughs> excuse me we see some sort of pattern as well it's circle triangle Circle triangle, circle triangle, circle triangle, circle triangle, circle triangle, circle triangle. So therefore their pattern, this is homogeneous. When we look at this pure substance, we see it's one type of atom. So therefore this is an element. When we look at this pure substance, we see two different atoms for each one. So therefore this is a compound. That is how we identify the types of matter. Now in the notes on the second page you are going to answer oops i'm sorry you are going to answer these three questions in your notebooks i will be going over these answers through bell work and through review so that you can check your work but what i want you to look at is um, i'm sorry number seven so we are going to give symbols to these atoms or these symbols or, these symbols so in number seven if it's round it's capital r if it's triangle it's capital t if it's square it's capital s lowercase q if it's plus it's capital p lowercase s so when we look at this one we only see one type so therefore that's r when we look at this one we have two different atoms so this would be square sq and ps because they are not stuck together we have to write them in that way so we have the word and or you could use the plus sign for this one we have round and then square plus so therefore we would write it like this it doesn't matter in which order you write it as long as you notice that because these two are stuck together you need to put the chemical symbols or the formulas put together and since this round is not attached to it therefore that's where the and is for this one we have triangle and round so that's T and R. For this one, we have two round atoms. So you could think of it as RR, but when you have more than one of the same, instead of writing each atom symbol, we would just write the subscript two. That's this representing the number of atoms that are in it. And then for this one, because the T and the R are together, this is how we would write it. So now 
what I'm going to go through is I'm going to give you another way for you to identify whether it is pure substance or mixtures. So when identifying different types of matter, the first thing that you look at is does it have a chemical formula? If it has a chemical formula, then we know it's a pure substance. If it has one capital letter, it is an element. If it has two or more capital, different capital letters, then it's a compound. Again, definition of the pure substance is it has the same composition throughout and cannot be physically separated. For a mixture, it will not have a chemical formula, but again, for the exception, if it does, there's going to be a the word and in between them, or a comma or a plus sign showing that the formula is not all put together, meaning that those atoms are not together. So therefore, if it has no chemical formula or the chemical formulas are in that way, it will either be hetero or homogeneous. If it's hetero, that means you can see the different parts. If it's homogeneous, you cannot see the different parts. Again, a mixture is not the same composition throughout and can be physically separated. Please make sure you review your notes and if you have any questions, reach out.